Hey guys, Bob Ostrom here from BobTeachesArt.com and today we're going to take a look at Illustrator and working with symbols. Symbols is a very powerful tool that's often overlooked in Illustrator and I thought today we'd take a peek at that. So I've gone ahead and created these snowflakes that I'm going to use for an illustration that I've been working on. I'm going to go to Window, scroll down until I find Symbols and open that up. Now you can see inside this Symbols library, I've already loaded these snowflakes. They're at a little bit smaller size to make it easier to work on my illustration. If I take these and drag them from the Symbols library onto my workspace, you can see that each one of those snowflakes is represented. And again, these are a little bit smaller. They're going to make it a lot easier when I start to work on the illustration. So let's take a look at what I'm working on and how we can use Symbols to make that happen. So let's go over to this file right here. You can see that it's badly in need of some snow and I've gone ahead and loaded up that library here. So let's say that you've created a symbols library and you want to save it and use it on another project just like I'm doing here. To do that all you need to do is open up your flyout menu here go down to the bottom and save your symbols library. If you want to load a symbols library to a new file simply go to open symbol library user defined and there's my snowflakes right there. Now I've already gone ahead and loaded those up. They're right here at the bottom of my symbols uh, library. So to use these I simply take them and drag them over like this. Now this is one way to do it but let's say that I wanted to do this a little bit faster and a little bit more efficiently. Well I happen to have this tool over here if you look at that the symbol sprayer tool. I have the uh, tear off menu here. If you're wondering how to use a tear off menu it's really simple. You just Roll over to the end when you see that little gray bar, you just click on it. That'll pop up like this. You, you'll, you may notice that my settings are a little bit lighter. Makes it a lot easier to see when you're doing these demos. Yours is probably going to be a little bit darker than this. Uh, if you want to uh, lighten up your, your screen and your work area, it's very simple to do. Uh, just find your uh, preferences. Go in here and find the user interface just like that. And you can see that I can adjust it this way. Okay, and that's not really part of the lesson, but I wanted to show you guys that real quick in case you like a lighter background like I do. Okay, so let's go back over here. We're looking at the uh, Symbol Sprayer tool. If I click on that guy and open up the uh, options, the tool options, you can see I've got the diameter. That's this little circle right here. That's basically the uh, spray area that I'm going to be using. I'm going to increase that a little bit make it a little easier to work with. We'll get that up to about five inches or so. And then you'll look at the symbol set density. Now I've got this set at three, but I want to show you what happens if we pump this up a little bit higher. Make that a 10. Go over here. Oh, um, and also the, uh, the intensity. You'll notice that I have mine set on pressure. And um, the reason that I've done that is because I work with a stylist. My stylus measures the pressure I use and then applies accordingly. So if I were using a mouse, I'd probably want to keep this on fixed and then adjust my intensity level over here. But since I'm working with a stylus and pressure, that's not going to apply. Okay, so let's grab one of these symbols right here, something nice and easy to see. Got a big flower there. If I start to roll this down here, you'll notice that as I apply more pressure, these get denser and denser, okay? And then it uh, becomes something that doesn't even look like what I really want it to look like. So let's get rid of that guy there. I'm going to grab uh, my snowflakes here. Let's go back to uh, my interface. Let's bump this down to something a little bit more reasonable. I'm going to go with like a, uh, a three. And then I'm going to go over to, let's get some of these guys out of the way. Go over to here, grab a snowflake. And I'll just start to kind of scribble across my background randomly like this. Okay. As I apply pressure, the snowflakes come more rapidly. If I ease off, they're a little more gradual. Okay, and I'm just kind of randomly going through here. And you can see that this is a much faster method than dragging them over individually. Okay. Let's say that I want a little bit more control uh, because I'm using the stylus. It's very easy. I believe if you were using a mouse, you could just you, you could just do a click, but I'm just gonna tap here where I want these. And the reason that I'm doing this is because you don't want to Snowflake to randomly appear right in the center of a character's face like that. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful as I place these guys. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now to make this a little bit more believable, what I want to do is I'm going to enlarge and reduce some of these snowflakes. 
and I'm also going to uh, change the opacity on them to give it the illusion of depth. So let's start with enlarging and reducing. I can go over here to my Symbol Sizer tool, click on that guy. As I roll over this, you'll notice that some of the uh, snowflakes tend to highlight, and as I apply pressure, they'll get a little bit bigger. And again, this is going to be a little bit more random than selecting each of these individually and trying to enlarge them that way. Okay, so I'm not going to go too nuts with this thing. But you get the basic idea there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go back to this little menu here, and this time I'm going to grab the screener tool. And as I start to roll over these, you'll notice that, again, some of them are going to highlight and they're going to appear to drop back. Now I've got to be careful with this one. This one's a little bit more sensitive than the last one. If I hold this down too long, you'll notice that the, the uh, snowflakes practically disappear. So I want to be careful not to go too nuts with this guy. I kind of like what's happening here. I think this looks pretty good. But let's say that I need a little bit of fine tuning in here. And I'm done with my symbols. Um, You'll notice that it's very difficult to uh, select any of these individually. I can select the ones that I put up there the first time by just dragging them. But if I try to take this, uh, any of these that I applied using the sprayer, you'll notice that the entire group selects. If I want to uh, get in here and fine tune this, all I need to do is go up to Object, Expand. Now each of these is an individual object, much easier to work with. Um, Another thing that you might notice here is that once these have been expanded, Illustrator keeps them as a group. If I want this to be a little bit easier to work with, I can go up underneath Object again, ungroup these. Now they're very easy to select one at a time. Okay, and I can start to move these around. I can also work with my opacity if I want to and just kind of get in here and do this. I find working with the Symbol Sprayer tool did a pretty good job. Um, some of these I'm feeling like I could just tweak a little bit here and there, but um, all in all, I think I've saved a ton of time as opposed to clicking and dragging or cutting and pasting. So there you have it. There is the symbols tool and the symbol sprayer tool. I hope you liked it. If you want more like this, come join me over at bobteachesart.com. See you soon. <laughs>